Hi everyone, welcome to these Python tutorials with our special focus on image processing. In the last video, we looked at IOU or intersection over union as a metric to evaluate the model performance for semantic segmentation, especially to understand better how the model is performing for majority class versus the minority class. And we realized that for minority class, that was tough to segment the IOU value was much lower compared to the majority classes. We had uh, a value of about 76% for, for this minority class and uh, 98 to 99% for the majority classes. Now, one of the reasons or one of the ways we can actually improve the performance of a model on the minority class is by properly balancing the data sets between the majority and minority. That's exactly the focus for this specific tutorial. And what do we mean by this majority and minority classes? Well, in this image, again, the same image we have used in the previous tutorial, uh, if you look at this dark area, which is represented in blue uh, in, on the right hand side, there's a lot of it. So this is a majority class and easy to segment. This gray area, which is represented in red on the right, is also, we have a majority class, we have a lot of it, and also a bit easier to segment, hence uh, uh, we can get better IOU values or intersection over uh, union or accuracy in general for this class. And the bright pixels, we don't have a lot of it. This is a minority class, but this is an easy to segment class because you can easily segment this using histogram segmentation or just simple OTSU. You do need machine learning. So easy to segment, again, I expect to see higher IOU or accuracy values. Now, where we see lower accuracy or intersection over union values are for this fourth class uh, represented with some texture. You know, you see these pixels with some texture are represented in green in this specific image. We don't have much of it. Uh, in fact, in this slice, we have enough, but in some of these slices in the 3D volume, we don't have a lot of this. So when you use this as training, you have, uh, you're actually overwhelming the model by giving too much information or too many pixels of blue, red, and also yellow, not too many, but easy to segment, right? Yellow is easy to segment. So how do we properly balance this data set so we can actually balance out the accuracy or IOU values between all of these? So that's the goal for this tutorial. And just to give you a quick heads up, there are three ways I'm going to propose. One is using weighted random forest, where we supply weights for each of these based on the pixel values. We say, okay, go ahead and balance this using these weights. So it's going to, uh, when, it, uh, when, when it actually splits the trees and when it assigns these pixels, it's going to divide them. It's going to uh, add more weight to these minority classes uh, to make sure it balances it off against the majority ones. The second trick is my favorite one where we manually balance the data by downsampling the majority and upsampling the minority classes. Okay, And the third one is very similar to the second approach except we use a predefined library or an approach called SMOTE. Smote, okay? uh, again, we'll talk about these three and I'll explain these in detail as we go through the code. Uh, one thing I plan on doing in this code, I tend to explain every line in the code, but we already did that in the last tutorial, so I definitely recommend you to watch that to understand exactly what was happening uh, with respect to our segmentation. So I'd like to focus more on balancing the data set in this video, but I'll cover the basics anyhow as I normally do. So let's jump into our spider IDE and continue uh, our coding. So here is the code we are going to work with, and the first part of this should be exactly the same as uh, the one from last video. So let's go through this at a faster pace and then focus more on the balancing data sets part. So let's uh, run the first few lines where we import the required libraries, and the next step is to open each of our training images. We have 10 of those and each image 1K by 1K. So we're going to open each of these images and then extract features and capture them as individual columns in our pandas data frame. First column being the pixel value itself. And as you can see, we are reshaping them into a single column. So for each image, we'll have about 1 million pixels. For 10 images, we expect 10 million pixels and uh, about 40 plus columns uh, we're containing our features. So let's go ahead and run these lines of code all the way down to the point where we add information for each image into our data frame. Now, 
Once this is done, the next step is to capture our mask. Again, this is exactly what we have done in the last video. So far, we haven't focused anything on balancing the data sets yet. We are just extracting the features, uh, linking our individual pixels to the ground truth value in the masks, which we'll do in a minute. And, uh, uh, and uh, then looking at how balanced is our data, okay? So now that we captured our image data set, if I scroll down, image data set, you see 10,199,000 uh, pixels, as we guessed, and 42 columns. And of those, one column is just image name, obviously useless in terms of fitting our model. So the next step, let's go ahead and uh, read all the corresponding masks from the drive. Okay, so here we are reading all the masks, and again, we should have 10 masks. And if you look at our mask data set, we have again exactly the same number of pixels, which we should, and two columns. One is the label value, which is our ground truth, and the mask name itself. So obviously mask name and image name, these are the columns we can drop. But first, let's go ahead and look at uh, uh, combining these two. So in this step, I'm combining our image columns and the mask columns into one single data frame. The reason I'm doing this is I would like to drop all the rows where my label values are equal to zero. Or in other words, the way I put it here, keep all the columns, sorry, all the rows where the label value is not equal to zero. Why am I doing this? Because in my specific example, my masks uh, uh, have a pixel value of zero where I haven't labeled anything. So my images are huge, 1K by 1K. Uh, I cannot label well, it, it's very laborious to label every pixel, so I only label them partially. And all the unlabeled regions are given a value of zero, which means I don't want to include them as part of the training. So this step makes sure we don't work with 10 million pixels, but only the ones that are uh, actually labeled. So in this example, now if I go back to data set, this is 372,000. So remember, we went from 10 million to 372,000. This is great. Now, is this data set balanced? Of these 372,000, how many belong to class one, two, three, four, right? So this is what we have to look at. So for that, first of all, let's go ahead and assign our X and Y values because when you wanna fit uh, this model to random, I mean, fit this data to random forest, obviously you need to supply your X and the Y. Y is the ground truth. So X is every column except for image name, mask name, and labels. So let's drop those and assign everything else to X. Y is only the column with label values, right? This is, this is our ground truth data, that's my Y. Now, if you look at the Y values here, we have our classes. Remember, initially we had zero, one, two, three, four. Zero being the unlabeled pixels, one, two, three, four correspond to the four classes. Uh, most of the time, a lot of built-in libraries, when you say you're doing multi-class problem, they assume that the classes start with zero, one, two, three. So to make sure we comply with that, let's go ahead and encode our labels from one, two, three, four to zero, one, two, three. That's all this step is doing. So this is kind of optional depending on how your masks are. Now that we have our X and Y, let's divide that into testing and training data sets, okay? And this is, should be very familiar to you. We are using our train, train test split from scikit-learn model selection and 20% I'm holding as testing and the remaining assigning for training. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, my training data set has 297,652 rows or pixels, and the remaining 74,000 are my testing data sets. Okay, now we are getting into the part where we want to understand the balance, but before we look at balancing, let's see how it works even without balancing, meaning let's repeat what we have done in the last video. So we are going to import random forest classifier, which, Okay, a bit slow. Uh, and then we are going to put a uh, number of trees or number of estimators as 50. So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's go ahead and fit this model. This is going to take uh, this is going to take a minute or so. So I'm going to pause this video so you don't waste uh, your time staring at the screen. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, that seems to be about a minute. So let's go ahead and print out our execution time just because we are curious and it's one minute, 14 seconds. Now let's predict on our X test. Remember we are holding 20% of data for testing purposes. So let's actually apply our model on this prediction on this test data set that it has never seen before. Okay, as part of the training. And then let's print out the accuracy again. The accuracy is uh, uh, basically the accuracy between your testing, which is uh, uh, your ground truth versus the prediction. 
and uh, we should see something about 95.25% great accuracy but does that what does that mean from intersection over union so this is again the stuff that we covered in the last video so our iou in this case is 91.2% and if you break it down into individual classes this is our this is the core problem we are trying to fix if you look at the individual classes the class number 2 you have 76.55% is there a way we can improve that? That's the whole point by balancing the data sets. So step number one, our approach number one, let's use weighted random forest by providing the class weights. Okay. And the way it actually works is it changes the uh, weight that each class has when calculating the impurity score. Okay. I'm going to leave this with you so I don't read a bunch of text uh, in front of you, but I already explained how it works. It's, it's, it's going to weight each of the classes accordingly to make sure uh, during the splitting process to make sure that each class is very well represented. Now, first of all, let's see how many of each uh, pixels do we have, right? So as part of NumPy, you can actually do np.unique, which is going to give you all the list of all the unique values. And if you actually put return counts equal to true, it's going to return how many of each unique value you actually have. So let's go ahead and print that out. So value of zero, a pixel with a value of zero, we have about 91,845. Pixel with value of one, we have only 59,000. Value of two, we have uh, 123,000. Value of three, we have 22,980, right? So obviously uh, two and uh, zero, we have quite a bit of this. And uh, one and three, not much. In fact, three is the bright pixels that are easy to segment. That's why you see 98.1% accuracy. For two, we only have 59,000. That's why we see 76, although it's a bit difficult to segment. So maybe we cannot get up to 90s, but even if we get to 80s or mid 80s, we should be fine. So let's see if we can do that. So how do we do that? Exactly the same uh, process as before, random forest, except uh, as part of random forest previously, we only give number of estimators. Sorry, this is important, so let's go back. Random forest classifier, we gave number of estimators and random state, which is you know uh, important to, for rep reproducibility. So here we are going to do pretty much the same, number of estimators and random state, except in addition, we're going to provide um, class weights. What are the weights of each classes? You can actually give that as balanced. So random forest will take care of actually assigning the weights itself based on how much data you have or you can assign that uh, uh, or you can tell how you want to balance it so i'm going to show you how you can balance it yourself because that's the toughest uh, you know one to figure out first of all let's get uh within scikit learn utilities there is something called class weight let's go ahead and import that and apply this class weight compute class weights and i want to balance this okay uh, on my y train data set so this is an easy way of figuring out what is the multiplication factor for each of these to make sure they are balanced so i'm being a bit lazy by using this this library there and if i print this out you should see the class weights right there 0 0.8 1 0.25 0 0.6 and 3.23 that's exactly the weights it's going to assign here if you put balanced so I'm showing this in case you want to assign some other types of weight. So let's go ahead and assign a weight of uh, uh, one to the first zeroth class and a weight of, uh, let's over uh, add more, like two to the second one and uh, 0.6 is okay for the third one. And uh, the next one, let's just add, uh, because this is easy to segment, let's just add a class weight of 1.5, right? I mean, these are again random. So class zero, one, class one, the weight is two, class two, the weight is 0.6, class three, the weight is 1.5. And I'm providing this as a dictionary. You have to provide this as a dictionary. So let's define this. And now all you need to do is class weight equals to my weights, that's it. And let's go ahead and uh, instantiate our random forest. And the next step is go ahead and uh, I call this random forest model penalized or weighted if you wanna call it. And now let's go ahead and uh, do exactly the same we have done before and see how our IOU values change, okay? So let's go ahead and start this. Again, I'll pause this video because it's going to take probably pr pretty much the same time, one minute, 10 to 14 seconds. Okay, so now that it's done, let's uh, again, out of curiosity, is this any slower than without weights? It's again, very similar, right? One minute, 10 seconds, uh, compared to the last time, one minute, 14 seconds, so approximately the same time. In fact, a bit faster, but that's just probably 
uh, not significant. So let's go ahead and predict using the updated random forest here. And uh, if you want to look at accuracy, let's go ahead and print out the accuracy here. 95.24. What is the accuracy the last time? So let's go ahead and print out the accuracy from the last time so we can compare these two. So last time, again, in fact, we went down slightly, but how did it do for each and every class? So for that, let's go ahead and look at our IOU. So let's go ahead and print all of these with IOU balanced. And then uh, let's also print out from the last time. And uh, I don't think we see much of a, uh, much of a difference. I mean, 92.5 this time with balanced data set and 92.48. 76.3, 76.5. In fact, we uh, we are not doing that good with this type of balancing. This is exactly why I added two other types of balancing, right? So now that we understand, okay, what this class weights are going to do, uh, it, all it's saying is, okay, by assigning class weights during the splitting process, it's not going to, uh, it's not helping us for this specific application. But you know how to do it in case you want to do it in future. So let me show you the uh, next way, which is my preferred way, which is, okay, I take all my data and then I'm going to balance it myself. And how do you do that? Well, uh, within scikit-learn utilities, import resample. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, for, uh, and let's again understand the problem here, right? So let's print these two so you can actually see that for class three, we have 154,000. Class one, we have 114,000. Well, I think I'm printing the uh, data set label value right there. Uh, and uh, class two, 74,000, class four, 28,000. Well, these values are slightly different than our X and Y that we saw earlier. That's because uh, I'm looking at the data set right now. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can also look at instead of data set in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Here, when we printed out the values, we were only looking for the training data set. Now here, I'm looking at the entire data set. Okay, I should have only looked at training data set, but uh, again, uh, we already wrote code for this, so it, it doesn't matter. The, the balance uh, should be very, uh, I should say, uh, before and after splitting, the, the balance should not be that much different, okay? So uh, now let's assign uh, all the labels with a value of one. Again, remember I'm dealing with original data set uh, here, uh, where our label values are one, two, three, four, not zero, one, two, three because I want to redo this and then re-separate uh, re, uh, this into X-train resampled, X-test resampled, okay? So again, I really don't want to confuse you guys, so let me go back and show you at what step are we. So we are reading, we are extracting features, we are doing all of that up to this step, data set. But instead of doing this step, I'm trying to balance first and then come to these steps. That's all we are trying to do, okay? So now let's go back and refocus. So my data set one is everything in the data set with a value of one, which is basically my class one. So I'm separating that, same with class two, same with class three, same with class four. So now I have four classes, four data set, data points, sorry, data frames, each corresponding to individual labels. Now I'm going to use my resample that I just imported, resample, and data set one, I'm going to just say, okay, uh, I don't care how many uh, values you have. Like for example, in this case, it's 114,721, but just condense them down to 50,000. So it's randomly going to resample, you know, subsample into 50,000. And I put a random state here with a specific value because every time I split, I want the same, same uh, subset. Otherwise, if you don't put the random state, every time you do this, you get different subset, and then your comparison of results can be a bit uh, uh, challenging. I do exactly the same for all four classes. So for the ones where we have less than 50,000, like 28,000 right here, it's going to copy some of these and uh, uh, replace, uh, you know, randomly, and then make them 50,000. So it's basically duplicates that we are talking about, okay? Um, so let's run all of these. And at the end of this, we should have a in four data frames, each with 50,000 data points. And now let's go ahead and concatenate all of them together into one data frame, okay? Resampled. And now we should have, if you go ahead and print out the number of values. So for each label, you have 50,000. I hope this makes sense. So it doesn't matter how many I have, I'm just saying, okay, just get 50,000 for each. 
okay now let's go ahead and do the stuff that we have done before which is define our x define our y drop the values pixel values uh, uh, i think we are already dealing with something where we have dropped pixel values of zero so let's go ahead and define our x and then define our y we did this earlier and label encoder remember we have our pixel values one two three four we have to change them to zero one two three to be consistent that step and then split them into train and test data sets same thing we have done this before and now let's define our random forest classifier normally which is just number of estimators and random state no tricks just straightforward random forest and let's go ahead and fit this one more time and see what we get okay and again i'm going to pause the video so you can just look at the results in a uh, minute or so this one appears to be a bit faster because we don't have as many data points uh, so let's go ahead and look at how long it actually took 24 seconds compared to one minute 10 seconds before but is the result good that's what we want to find out so let's go ahead and predict it on our x test except resample right and uh, let's go ahead and pr print the accuracy so our accuracy is 96.95 and what did we get earlier the first time the first time random forest accuracy right there so we got an accuracy of 95.25 now we got 96.95 clearly accuracy improved right so now let's look at intersection over union especially for the class that we care about so let's come down here and go ahead and run all of these lines and instead of going back and forth we know the previously we got 76 point something and uh, whoa this is a nice surprise for class two our uh, our uh, intersection over union is 87.4 remember the last time we had 76 and uh, with uh, by adding weights to our random forest it didn't improve, uh, improve at all but now you can clearly see how this got improved in fact let's go ahead and print out so we can so we can properly compare what is it for the first time we have done so originally without any balancing 92.4 but now with balancing class 1 94.1 improvement with class 1 class 2 definite improvement 76.5% 87.4% 93.7 for this one 93.3 slight lower value but still not that much 98.1 for class 4 99.5 for class 4 so obviously we have done much much better so this clearly tells you the importance of uh, balancing your data not just when it comes to semantic segmentation but also when it comes to classification or any other type of machine learning uh, approach that you're taking finally the the last method is uh, is let's go down sorry about this uh, all the way down yeah smote which stands for synthetic minority oversampling technique obviously this is what we are trying to do and the term synthetic means it's going to synthetically generate new data the oversampling we just did it copies existing data and although randomly it copies existing data and creates new entries here it's synthesizing it learns oh this is how you have your other data so let me create new data points so you got to be a bit careful uh, you know whether this is the right approach or not but it is synthetic data okay not copy of your original data so uh, this is available smote and also edison i'm not going to show that as part of this but these two are two different two approaches uh, for uh, oversampling or balancing your data so all, all we are trying to do here is again define once you import this again by the way this is part of uh, imb learn package and it pretty easy to install pip install imb, imb learn and then you are just defining your x and y by applying this smote with some random state i always use random state and you fit on your x and y data so it gives you the resampled data right there and then the rest of the story is the same so let's go uh, this is going to take a lot of time this mode step this probably takes three minutes or something yeah so this is a slow process that's why i'm not going to show you right now i will share the code so you can test it out on your own data sets uh, eventually okay so just to summarize this balancing data is very important just by multiplying your uh, your uh, you know uh, whatever the approach uh, in this example we used random forest just by multiplying your class weights may not be ideal approach uh, you're just limited by the technique itself so you need more 
training data, either collect more training data from the minority classes or follow the approach that we did, which is uh, synth uh, not synthetically, but uh, in the example we saw, we actually copied some of the existing uh, data, replaced it. So all of our classes have uh, equally balanced, like 50,000 in this example. And we saw a clear improvement when we did that. We went from 76% to 87% for our minority class, which is very good actually for that specific class. So I hope again, you found this tutorial to be very useful. This is a bit long, but I hope you found this useful. Please go ahead and subscribe to this channel because more videos are on their way and I'm pretty sure you find them very, very useful.